I bought this last year with 73,000 miles for $5,500. It was a granny car and he bought it from the granny. I tell people this is always the way to buy it because there's plenty of guys out there buying it from the grannies and then flipping them. This car, if you bought it from a granny, polished it all up, you could have easily sold it for ten, fifteen thousand dollars these days with that low mileage on it. He found it himself and he got a pretty good deal. This one's an all-wheel drive, so he really got a deal. It's got the insanely reliable Toyota V6, four cam, variable valve timing. Now the only downside of this car course is it's got a rubber timing belt. This is a three liter. It is not an interference engine. So if that timing belt breaks, no damage is done. You just tow it to a mechanic put it back together and away you go. Now of course all the late later model ones have timing chains so it doesn't really matter. Toyota was smarter than Honda. Honda's still making these stupid V6 engines with rubber timing belts. God knows why they are but this is not an interference engine so you don't have to worry. You can't be thinking if I don't change that belt and it breaks there goes the engine. No that's not the case because this is a non-interference engine. Put the dipstick it's not burning any oil. Of course it's only got 78,000 miles on it. These engines are good for three four five times that. That's the advantage of buying a granny car. She was in her 80s but obviously she could still drive <laughs> because it's not crumpled up all over the place with a bunch of dents. So you know you don't have to worry about it. You know, what you see is what you get. You see it all dented up you pay less for it but in this case there wasn't any problem and since it's a northern car we'll go underneath check it out. Not only is the frame rock solid, it's not really rusty at all. This baby was made in Japan, let me tell you something. They knew how to rust proof these things a long time ago. They don't have problems with them. You want to always check, you never know. Somebody might hit a bunch of speed bumps and then knock the coating off and they rotted away, but this thing is whistle clean underneath. It doesn't have rust, it probably never will because the original coating's still on it. They know how to build them. It's not a problem rusting out on these unless you're in a real severe, like you drive through the ocean waves all the time on a beach or something that's gonna eat anything up and as we look inside yeah they're leather seats and they're crinkled a little it's a 20 year old car they're still not ripped though I gotta give them that we'll start it up smooth idle and here's the engine purring away no shaking you know this is basically the same engine that's in my wife's Lexus these things can run forever and the fact that you can get an SUV like this that can get 30 some miles a gallon on the highway, as old as it is, is kind of remarkable. He got lucky in more ways than one because there's another guy I was looking at and the guy said, oh I don't know if I'm gonna, so he jumps in and says here's the money, I'll take it, you know. You find a deal like this, let me tell you, even if you don't want a car, buy it. You could double your money selling to somebody else or if you're a nice guy you could start telling all your relatives I got this beautiful Lexus for 5500 you know you want to buy it happy with it it's a great car you know you find something like this don't question buy it and worry about what you're going to do with it later my wife's Lexus was the same thing we didn't need a car we had a precedent that ran fine a matrix that ran fine but hey when I find a car like that and now 10 years later I'm still driving and it still runs as good as this does don't hesitate when you find a deal like this this is all wheel drive a lot of times you don't need all wheel drive but if it comes with all wheel drive and you're only paying 5500 bucks who cares like Lexus has problems with their all wheel drive system they don't the only problems I've ever seen is if people wreck them and bent stuff they generally don't wear out by themselves so We'll get my scan tool and see what kind of shape it's in electronically. We'll do diagnostics. There's one warning light, but that's for the squirter. <laughs> see, he's in a long squirter fluid or it's broken. As you can see, it's only got 78,000 miles on it. And he just told me he knows it's low, so that's all that is. Now, it's per usual in a Lexus, there's no code, so let's look at live data. The one thing I notice is a typical. You can see the long term fuel term for bank one and bank two. We got 3.9% here, and the other side is 7.81. It's having to add a little bit of fuel. But let me tell you something. He should leave that alone because he's getting phenomenal fuel mileage. That means it's running a little bit lean, which is what you want because you're going to get better gas mileage. The temperature gauge runs right in the middle of where it's supposed to. Everything's working fine. If it's running a little bit lean, it has to add a little fuel. Live with that. You get 30 some miles a gallon in this, be happy and don't complain. They're 
actually better that way. I could get it to get zero fuel trim, but you would actually get worse gas mods. I've done that for people. And then they'll say, oh, why did you do that? I said, well, you wanted me to, I warned you. I said, it's running fine, leave it alone. Well, I don't want it to run too lean. Well, clean stuff, adjust stuff, and then guess what? He got worse gas mods. So, this case, we're gonna leave it alone. Man, Seraphos Sanchez is good, 3.03, it's a three liter engine, that's typical. So, yes, it's an excellent shape. Now, it's got this cool interior, it's all black, and lots of space. You can see, he's resting in this thing. Big old sunroof for 5,500 bucks. What a deal, we're gonna take it for a spin. Oh, car, no backup camera, so we gotta look. Big deal. These were very popular SUVs because they're not super high, but they're not super low. It went over that big bump without scraping or anything, which is a big deal. That's a gigantic bump. From a granny, so 78,000 miles is believable. A lot of people will lie, cheat, set the speedometers back, but in this case, I don't hear wheel bearings roaring, I don't hear any other noise. If it really had a ton of more mileage on it, I would hear the wheel bearings roaring, the suspension wouldn't be as tight as this as I turn it. It reacts instantaneously. Be leery of low mileage cars like this, but I mean, look at the steering wheel. It's not worn, it doesn't even have a cover on it. The wood's still clean, so this is real mileage on this thing. Nobody coming there, nobody coming there. Let's see what this thing does when we step on the gas. Smooth power. Smooth shift and transmission. That really is the actual mileage on this thing. Now, the only problem he had was the ABS system wasn't working right. And he had a friend, because he was in a hurry, before he brought it to me. And he put two sensors on the rear. That's all he had to do was put two sensors on. Bother with the front sensors, you can see. Turns on a dime. I mean, the only reason people didn't buy these things is because they cost too much money when they were new. <laughs> yeah, you can find one for 5500 bucks with this kind of mods, like I said. Snap it up. Everything's fine. Super smooth idle. And that transmission shifts like a dream. Of course, that's not very many miles for a Lexus, I mean. I've seen these things just three, 400,000 miles, and they were still going strong. Now we go in a $5,500 luxury SUV. Boy, <laughs> this guy got the deal of the century on this car. And that was last year. Still in the pandemic, and hey, you look around, you never know. Ask your friends. In this case, somebody's granny. Relatives are telling people his mother knew her, away he went and bought it. Even a fancy CD player. <laughs> Windows, AC, everything works fine. Alexis, you can see no little speakers. It's got a killer stereo system in it. And it may be old. Yeah, it's 20, 20 years old, but it's still got low and high heated front seats. You get too hot, you can put it on low. You don't have to have it hot all the time. High, low, or off. Now, as you can see, the steering wheel is old fashioned. Oh, boo. It only has cruise control on it. That's it. It still works. Doesn't have all the fancy buttons. Oh, boo hoo. So the buttons are over here. Who really cares? It's an excellent car. It'd be old, but it's still got VSE on it. They put them on these things back in the day. You can polish these headlights to make them shiny or replace them with more modern ones that look even cooler. But hey, it's a $5,500 classic. You can't go wrong with that. No rust. I don't think you can't get deals today because you can if you look around, especially look around for grandma cars okay here we have a blast from the past a 91 toyota pickup people just bought it for 2500 bucks i'm going to show you how to check them out how not to listen to what people tell you and you'll see this is actually a very good truck even though it's old and of course as i always say don't listen to anything somebody tells you about a vehicle that they're selling to you because they told them that oh it just had a clutch put in well they drove it from knoxville to here which is like 360 they got 300 the last 60 were told because the clutch broke because it was so old it just completely fell apart it's got a new clutch in it now and it works perfectly fine but don't believe what people say i get a lot of guys oh it's got a new engine and i look at it like it doesn't look like a new engine to me people just make up stories you can't see the inside of a clutch till you pull the transmission off so don't listen to what people have to say let's say you look at one of these and the clutch slips you're in first gear and it slips a lot then you know well the clutch is worn out and you knock off the price of a clutch on the asking price of the vehicle in this case it worked okay until it just broke because it was so old it just physically came apart 91 i had a 91 toyota corolla sr5 that thing ran forever it was white too and as you can see made in japan the best ones are made in japan and this one of course is a five-speed standard transmission which is even better mine was a five-speed same transmission as this that's our five thing ran forever you got to put a clutch in every once in a while big deal it's not like an automatic transmission that not only will you spend thousands to fix it but half the time they don't even fix it right these are pretty bulletproof just the clutches wear out now when we look under the hood you'll see the four-cylinder engine okay this is a 22 series 
These engines are basically bulletproof. They can run forever. They do have a fuel injection system. It's the old school mass airflow sensor with a big vein that moves inside here. But as you can see, even though this thing is a 91, most of the parts are still original. <laughs> I mean, I can see even the AC compressor is original. The is original. Toyota knew how to build it. Look, the master cylinder's rusty, but it's still the original one, and it still stops. Seats are falling apart, I mean, that's what happens. Get some good seat covers, they make tons of them. And for those of you that don't know what this is, this is called a window crank. It cranks your window up and down. It doesn't have electric windows, and guess what? These things don't break. Fire up. Typical Toyota starts on the first start. Speedometer, temperature gauge, fuel gauge. All you really need, and of course, they put a Pioneer aftermarket stereo because the ones in it were crap. But, hey, that's a decent stereo. It's got a decent size glove box. Look, it even has the original owner's manual. Check it out. It even came with this nice cap. They got a cap on it. And there's the old worn out clutch parts that they say were new. You can see they're not new at all. For a vehicle like this that's gonna last forever, it's not a bad idea to throw a clutch in after you buy it anyways. Then you don't have to think about anything. And you can see, the original steel wheels, they're still in good shape. Hey, they don't sound like that anymore. They don't make them as thick. Not sure it's got a little tick of noise. An old engine like this is gonna make a little bit of noise. You're just gonna hear little valve noises here and there. Everything gets worn and it's this old. As long as it's running good, not burning much oil, you're gonna be happy with one of these. Don't have to worry about airbags blowing up in your face. They don't have airbags, but they got seat belts. Now these aren't racing machines by any stretch of the imagination. They'll go up and down the road virtually forever. And this thing only has 255,000 miles on it. I've seen these with 500 and they're still going. Sounds good. Shifts fine. Now that it has a new clutch in it. They drove it to me in Clarksville for Knoxville, 360 miles, going 95 miles an hour. <laughs> and it still went until the clutch broke. It'll make it back fine now because it has a new clutch. Like I said, the guy just lied to him and said, oh, it just had a clutch put in. He absolutely lied. The old one was just junk, just came apart. He has the engine revs higher. You don't hear any kind of horrible noises. That's just a little bit of valve ticking. And if it was really bad, it would tick when you really gassed it. And it doesn't, it actually quiets down then. Sure, it's not gonna race going up hills, but I mean, it gets you where you go. It's an old pickup truck that might run another 20, 30 years. Oh, as you can see, it runs perfectly fine. Got the windows open for some air. It's just a nice, dependable little work truck. Hey, the horn still blows. Turn signals work, headlights work, and it goes down the road. And even with 255,000 miles on it, the wheel bearings are still solid. They're not humming. The steering's still good. Not done that power steering, but it really isn't that hard to steer. Even parking and parallel parking isn't all that hard. So there you have it, 2,500 bucks for a truck that still runs. I wouldn't be surprised if it was running 20 years from now. It's in Tennessee now, it's not gonna rust out or anything. Hey, so a decent deal. Sure, they got lied to about the clutch, but what the heck. Now it's got a new clutch, it can go a long time without having to think about anything at all. And hey, it still looks pretty good. It's not bashed in, it's clean. A nice truck for 2,500 bucks. All right, the guy paid $3,200 for this and he put like 140,000 miles on it. You can't complain about that. Now, he realizes it's getting hard to find parts for him in the United States and he admitted it's the first and last Suzuki car he's gonna buy. Well, I'll tell you one of the reasons his go so far and why he's not really complaining. It has a six speed manual transmission. The automatics were so slow, Americans couldn't stand them. Now, you might think Suzuki, normally people think motorcycles, right? I got a screaming Suzuki, does 175 miles an hour, phenomenal motorcycles, but their cars for Americans are underpowered, especially with an automatic. 95% of Americans drive automatic transmissions. You get in one of these with an automatic transmission and drive around, you're gonna get out and you're never gonna get back in again. There were those little Suzuki Samurai Jeep things, right? People liked them, um, no good for long distance travel. I had a customer in Houston, he loved his, till he went to visit his relatives in Florida. He went from Houston to Florida, came back and sold it. He said that thing rode like a washing machine, it was horrible. Now, those are fun little toys. They pulled out of the United States almost a decade ago because of horrible sales. They didn't have enough dealerships, the ones they did, didn't know how to fix the vehicles, parts were hard to get, but something like this can be 
an economic savior. He does DoorDash, Uber, all kinds of stuff with it because he gets 30 something miles a gallon. That's what these things are made for. Which is rather bizarre because the Suzuki motorcycles are the exact opposite. They're screaming race machines that are totally insane. They even made a car, they took a Suzuki Hayabusa motorcycle engine that'll do over 200 miles an hour and they put it in a little sports car. But you know, they really didn't sell because you got two wheels, it weighs you know, 500 pounds. You put it in a car and you'll see. With a six speed, it's okay. It's a good transportation car. But when there's no infrastructure for the car, how many people are going to buy them? And I have to tell you the truth all of my customers have bought these in Houston. Every single one of them was an automatic transmission. A lot of them were college students, didn't have much money, and they couldn't keep up with the pace of Houston freeways. And some of them even got rear ended, totaled the car because they were going too slow. When you're merging, you better get going fast. They don't with an automatic transmission. Like I said, this is a standard. It's a different story. Okay, and this little thing, it doesn't even burn oil yet. He changes the oil every 6,000 miles with full synthetic oil. It doesn't burn oil. And as we take this stupid beauty cover off, well, we'll peek under. I'm too lazy to unbolt. You can see it's pretty much a normal vehicle. It doesn't have a turbocharger or a supercharger. It's normally aspirated, and it is a Japanese company. The engines are good. Suzuki makes great engines. It's got plenty enough power with a six speed manual transmission to get you where you're going, get good gas mileage, and last all these years. And as we look inside, it's got 228,591 miles on it. We'll start her up. Starts right up. I tell you, it's as quiet as a Toyota engine. The AC still blows freezing cold. They weren't poorly made. They were just not made for the American market. Other countries in the West Indies, they're nuts about Suzuki. Australia, where the price of gas is high. They love these little cars. But in the United States, too small of a car for an automatic transmission. And they were just dismal fails in the United States. On top of, like I said earlier, they had no dealer support network. They were always trying to get dealers, but Here's the other problem with it being a small car. Small cars cost less, right? Nobody wants to own a dealership that sells small cars because they also have a smaller price with a smaller profit margin. Why do you think they're selling a bunch of big cars? Because there's a higher profit margin on them. My Matrix, okay, it's an 07, made in Cambridge, Ontario. Why did they stop making them? They were great vehicles. They didn't make enough money selling them. They'd rather sell you a Venza. They'd rather sell you a Highlander or a Forerunner. They don't want to sell you something that's going to run forever and not make them as much profit. It's a business decision. 200 some thousand miles you can see, other than the battery, just about everything on it is still original equipment. AC, brakes, power steering. I mean, these things actually are pretty well made if you don't mind a small car. Now here we go with a ready running destination. US, you see Canada, they were relatively popular in Canada because gas costs so much more. And it knows it's an XX4 rear wheel drive, 2007 13, two liter. And we have to select the transmission. This is a manual transmission. And there's everything. No cruise control, basic model. And we're gonna do an auto scan. It's old, but I could even do a topology scan. So here we go. It's gonna go through everything. And while we're going through, you can see he put a better radio in. There's no sunroof. And he has Star Wars taken over from the <laughs> dome light, who cares? You know? The bottom of the seat's okay, put a seat cover on the top. And it's got some space in the back. I am the first mechanic that's ever even looked at this car that he had to take it to. That's how these cars are pretty well made and very simple to maintain. They don't have turbos, any fool can do a brake job, change the spark plugs. They're very easy to work on. Loads up the wazoo. The first is the SRS. I wouldn't expect the airbag system to work anymore. I mean, as old as it is with all those mileage, there's going to be a zillion codes. So let's see what that says. Okay, here we go. Occupant classification module sensor, not performance. Side airbag resistance too high. Side airbag resistance high. Occupant classification module communication fault. Passenger seatbelt buckle sensor open. We really don't care, right? I mean, we'll erase them anyways just for kicks. Let's face it, you get a car that's old, don't expect the airbags to save your life. Seatbelts work great, buckle them up. You can see it erase some, but there's still some. They're hard code, so forget the airbag system. It doesn't work anymore. And the BCM, okay. The BCM, the body control module, it has a whole bunch of codes. See what they are, there'll be a giant list soon. Here we go. Outside air temperature sensor circuit open. Tire pressure low. Tire sensors, well we knew that because the tire monitor is on. 
tire pressure monitoring system. Each tire in the valve stem, there's a battery and a little broadcast unit that tells the computer the tire pressure. Guess what? The batteries wear out over time. They're not replaceable. You'd have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to put new ones in. A tire gauge costs 10 bucks. Just check your tires. <laughs> Don't spend the fortune fixing those stupid systems that as they age, just cost more. You might think, oh, it's only one I'll replace it. Well, guess what? That one is as old as the rest. So if you replace that one soon after, the other ones will start going out. What we want to do is look at live data. We'll start her up and we will go to the live data on the powertrain. Total fuel trim here it's 0. 0.780. 0. So it's either nothing or less than 1%. In a car with 200,000 miles, you can't complain about that. You really can't. Remember, it's color coded. These are all black, means it's all good data. Here's the air fuel ratio sensor. Check it out. 0 is perfect. Well, there's perfect. 0 minus 0 0.004. So that means it's only 4 one thousandths of a percent off. Well, you can still get an awful lot of data out of these things. And I gotta say something. Okay, this thing has 200,000 miles. It doesn't shake at all at idle. It is smooth. And that's with the AC on. Kind of reminds me of my old Opal. First car I ever had. But it didn't have air conditioning. It just had windows. You might laugh at this little car, but he's got a trailer. He's remodeling his house. And he hooks a trailer up to it. That is the advantage of a manual transmission. He had a guy with a Honda tow a U-Haul trailer from California to Rhode Island. Mind you, you got crap gas mileage. Instead of getting 35, you got like 18. But, I mean, you're pulling that kind of weight. The fact that it made it, went over the Rockies, and didn't have problems, tells you. You might think about a standard, a manual transmission. Nobody to the right, one guy to the left. Let's hope it's turn signal. It means he's really turning. We're going to our little drag strip. We're gonna come to a stop, and we'll see what this baby can do. Ready, set. Hey, it burned rubber. Look at that makes a lot of noise it accelerates you know yes it's not a race car but hey i'll tell you you listen to that engine it's got a nice sound we're doing 60 now hey i can't complain and it's relatively quiet for a little puddle jumper i don't hear bearings it's pretty well air sealed doesn't make that much noise hey i gotta say i'm impressed by this thing but as i said if you ever get in one of these as an automatic transmission you're gonna wish it had an engine twice the size but with six gears hey you want to go faster just go down a gear 20 some thousand miles doesn't burn oil still runs smooth so here we are a suzuki sx4 and what's wrong with it well mechanically i have to say basically nothing the ac works it drives like a dream now sure cosmetically you know he's got little plastic wraps holding it together all kinds of crazy stuff the paint is fading away the clear coat's gone and the water-based paint they put on didn't hold up and it faded out a Toyota did the same thing, right? But this thing, it might go another 200 something thousand miles if it keeps changing the oil every five, six thousand miles with synthetic oil. The standard transmissions, the manual transmissions can run forever. Hey, this thing actually doesn't run any different than it did when it was brand new off the showroom floor, truthfully. Yeah, they're not race cars, but you felt it. It had plenty of get up and go, and the engine didn't have any misses, the bearings and everything are working, and yeah. The struts are a little bit worn, but hey, they got 200,000 miles. He doesn't care, it still goes down the road. He uses it for Uber, for delivery and stuff. And for his 3,200 bucks, and he's got 140,000 he put on himself, hey, he's making out like a bandit with this car. Just realize though, if you ever see one of these with an automatic transmission, jump at the opportunity to drive it. <laughs> get in it and drive it and you'll probably get out and say well that was an experience I'm never going to repeat and then you would look for one that had a manual transmission in it so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell